Hi guys and welcome back to the channel VAG Technic. So this video was actually requested by one of our viewers from abroad and he was complaining that we don't have enough footage about the V8 engine, how we install in the timing chains because he planning to do the job on his own. He was asking me if he have something available anytime soon to actually film how the timing chains are installed and guess what? There's the engine, there's the car. So if you already get this far, the rest of it is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And yeah, there are actually a few reasons why you want to remove your engine out of the vehicle. First reason, as you can probably tell, oil leaks absolutely everywhere. Quite loads of gasket will need to be replaced to actually stop the oil from coming out of the engine. And that means removal is your ideal option. If you probably did notice the drive belt is not installed properly but there's more things what we have to actually do on this particular engine from the B7S4. There will be also a full video about this particular car and reason why I decided to film the S4 B6 B7 again because people are buying them for ridiculously amount of money and this is what we're taking out of the car which I think is not acceptable. But back to the topic. So we took the engine now already. Uh, all you have to do now is just turn it around, take the timing chain covers off and install the timing chain kit we'll be using as well. It's from TPS, everything is genuine like from Audi. So all the chains, tensioners and so on and so on and so on. Reason why you have to remove the engine, the common fault if the chains were not done and the guides were not upgraded, this plastic fella used to break as you can see broken and there's edge missing as well this is from another car but uh, it is a common fault they usually shred it to pieces and you even might end up with bent valves because the timing can actually jump so this is the main reason we are upgrading them for the rs4 guides which are metal base body and just a plastic slider on top you can't have them fully metal because metal on metal is leaving chunks even if it's lubricated and everything might get into the sump and you might damage the engine internally so the plastic is there for a reason second reason why you want to remove your engine if your timing is out because of the camshaft adjuster so this is what's left of it just the plate and usually if the engine wasn't service all time or the oil quality was poor you will have a problem with this hole where the pin actually sits and as soon as it will wear out and it will get oval, the camshaft adjuster is moving however is once or it's just stuck open. So usually you will have a misfire on bank one or bank two. There will be an incorrect coloration fold as well. And obviously you have to replace the whole unit. The timing can be always checked by VCDS. So before you're pulling the engine out, it's good to actually diagnose the vehicle, what's wrong with it, if something is wrong and try to check and replace as much as you can while the engine is out. So if you want to check the timing on VCDS is measuring blocks 091, 092, 093, where you have all the specified and actual values. And if these two numbers are the same, your timing is fine. If the specified is different to the actual value, your timing is out and you probably have an issue with the camshaft adjuster or the camshaft adjuster unit or even the solenoid. I was actually doing a bit of a research online and I did struggle as a normal human being to come across a timing chain kit or everything where you need to do the job. So I decided to create a listing on eBay. I will leave the link in the description below for the kit, the, for the base job, what you need if you're planning to do the job on your own. So you have uh, four chains, four tensioners, all the guides all the gaskets, all the seals what you need, including the oil filter for the job. So just have a look at the link in the description below if you're planning to do the job on your own. So next step what we do, we're just going to turn the engine around, take all the timing chain covers off. We will put the engine in a timing position with the tools, what you will need for this, and we will just start installing the new timing chains. So let's get to it. So as I said, the oil was leaking everywhere and as soon as we remove our timing chain covers, we can confirm we have a problem with the plastic bracket again. It's not fully broken, but you can tell it will go soon. So first thing first, engine in timing position. We have to put the crank pin from the bottom of the engine and we have two plates for each side cylinder head for the camshafts. And this is the easiest way to remove your timing chains with the guides and the tensions. 
Right then, so if you're planning to do this job on your own, you definitely need more things than just the timing chains with the tensioners. There's quite loads of small bits like the gaskets and the o-ring seals. On this particular V8 we also need the camshaft adjuster units because I already checked them and they are worn out. So we will need the diamond washers as well along with the new gaskets behind the camshaft adjuster controller. So before actually fitting the old bits I always check them if there's not damage inside or anything otherwise it will lose oil pressure and it will not adjust the timing as it should be. So once the old units are checked and are ready to install we can move to our clean engine. I'm installing the new gaskets for the camshaft adjuster controllers. As I mentioned, they always have to be replaced. Once you tie them, you gotta replace them, otherwise they're not holding the oil pressure. Second thing is the black paint is actually peeling off and it's not the best to have some peeling paint in the oil system. We are also replacing these diamond washers. They are very thin and obviously if you're gonna remove them, you can't even see them properly, but they are definitely there. They are very important to hold the friction between the camshaft adjuster unit and the camshaft, otherwise the timing might jump even if if you're gonna tie it to Newton meter spec and you might damage your engine. So first camshaft adjuster unit is in place and I'm just putting the bolts there so they are holding in place. We will get to the Newton meter spec later on when we will be tightening the rest of the things on. Reason why we always check these and not necessarily replacing them because they are quite expensive. So one unit is over a thousand pounds plus VAT if you need two of them. Yeah, it's getting quite deep into the pocket. So if something is fine and it doesn't require replacing, we are not replacing them. The electric solenoids with the connector, what you can see, uh, they are operating fine because we always check the car with VCDS before the engine is coming out. So the camshaft adjuster units are operating fine. So there's no reason to replace those as well. Next up, I'm installing these plastic sliders and afterwards we can begin with the timing chain along with the guides. And the first guide's coming on, it's actually an upgraded RS4 guide and second up it's the gear along with the timing chain. The reason why these gears gotta be removed left and right because the timing chain is not able to slide out because of the water pod on the cylinder heads on the left and right. It's a protection at the same time just in case something happened with these guides the timing shouldn't actually jump but even if the plastic guide which is upgraded will break this actually quite a big chance that the timing might jump or you might bend up your valves. So as a second thing I'm installing the gear along with the second upgraded RS4 guide. So I'm gonna just try to slide it on together somehow. As I said there's not enough space and it's quite tight. Also you gotta be super careful not to damage your slider plastic on your metal guide. So you can probably tell straight away uh, that these guides are upgraded because the body is fully metal and it's just a plastic slider on top. Obviously why is not fully metal and there's a plastic because plastic is much softer material and is not really good if you have a metal chain grinding on some other metal parts you might have a metal dust in the oil contamination and you might have internally damaged your engine. As a last thing for the middle chain, the guide along with the oil tensioner. Always check if everything is moving freely so the gears are sitting in properly in place. So the oil tensioner have an o-ring seal. You always have to be careful not to drop it like I did in the video as you can see. There's our o-ring seal coming down into the oil sump. So luckily I did notice and I'm just gonna quickly remove it. Uh, best thing how the o-ring will actually hold on the oil tensioner is just put a bit of a grease onto the oil ring and it should stick to the surface of the oil tensioner so this way you will not lose it again. So I'm putting the bolts just to actually hold down the oil tensioner. We will tie everything to the Newton meter spec in a second. So once the mine chain with all the guides and tension is in place, you're just gonna check if everything is moving freely again and the chain sitting properly. As the last thing, I'm just installing the plate along with the Torx 30. I'm reusing the bolts because obviously TPS don't recommend to actually replace them, so we are not replacing them. The bolt wire I just put in had like a Loctite on, so I just clean it again and put the Loctite on again. So we will continue with the Newton meter specs. So all the Torx 30 bolts are 10 Newton meters along with the oil tensioner as well. The left hand side gear is 5 Newton meters and 90 degrees and the right hand side gear bolt is 42 Newton meters.
So that's the stage one done. Middle chain along with the guides, tensioner is in place. Everything is tied to the Newton meter spec and we can move on to the cylinder heads left and right. So meanwhile, I'm looking for the parts. Miroslav decided to do a smoke show with the smoke detector. So he's working on a green Cupra. We'll be actually done a four wheel drive conversion on this car and there's a boost issue right now. So thank you very much for the smoke effects. Let's move back to our engine. So next up, oil tensioner again coming on. This is that upgraded part is genuine original as it should be you can't really get an upgraded part because rs4 had a different timing on the cylinder head so it will not fit but we never had an issue with the oil adjusters or the plastic guides on the cylinder heads so there's no need to actually replace them or even look for a replacement again i'm just putting the bolts so it's holding the tensioner in place we will tight everything to the newton meter spec afterwards and now the plastic guides coming on actually you can't even mess up it will only go one way onto the engine and best thing is just keep all the part numbers so you can see them that's the correct way to put them on actually another mistake i put the wrong timing chain because left and right cylinder head have different length chain so obviously this is the shorter one so we just have to swap them around very quickly so the chains looks very similar left and right i just want to show you it's quite easy to do the mistake i don't remember the part numbers obviously we've done many many engines but sometimes i just still mess up next up we are putting the camshaft adjuster along with the plate for the camshaft sensor and as a last thing we are installing the gear for the exhaust cam along with the washer and the new bolts so tps is recommending to replace these bolts because they're obviously stretching quite a lot and if we will not replace them we are not covered with any warranty because that's the policy so whatever they tell us that needs replacing we have to replace it otherwise they will not provide us any warranty on the parts once the left hand side cylinder head is sort of done we can move to the right hand side cylinder head so the chain is coming on and next up we're just installing the plastic guide and second the metal guide for the oil tensioner So there's our new camshaft adjuster. This is actually the most expensive part from the whole job. It's uh, for pair over thousand pounds plus you need the gaskets and the diamond washers. If you're planning to do it always check them and if they need replacing definitely replace them because otherwise you have to remove the engine out again and you might get fed up. So again camshaft adjuster in place, new bolt along with the metal plate for the cam sensor and as the last thing i'm installing the gear for the exhaust cam along with the washer and the new bolt again last thing on the cylinder head we will install the oil tensioner i don't know why but the cylinder head oil tensioners don't actually have any o-ring seals or anything they're just sitting on the machine surface so probably it is enough like i said we never had an issue with these tensioners so it should be fine I'm just gonna put the bolts in place so it's holding the tensioner and once everything is in place we will start tightening everything down to the newton meter spec so the newton meter spec again 10 newton meters once everything's tight we can move to the final chain for the oil pump and sort of like a balance shaft so i'm installing the chain on the oil pump first then onto the crank and to the balance shaft so there's sort of like loop it's a bit of a tricky to actually install the tensioner along with the guides quite a big piece as you can see so this one again have a gasket it's good to replace all these gaskets otherwise you might have low oil pressure and you might have a timing chain rattle after you start up and then you gotta remove the engine out again so just be careful this locking pin which is holding the tension in place might be in the way so just push it out a bit and then we're gonna start sliding it in between the balance shaft and the crank first to put the chain onto the plastic bracket and then we're gonna try to slide the chain onto the rest of the bracket from the back So I have to use a small screwdriver to actually slide the chain onto the bracket properly. You have to make sure that the chain is sitting fully in between the edges of the plastic. 
otherwise you won't be able to actually tie it down properly so again installing the bolts we are using the same bolts we're just going to tighten it again 10 newton meters just make sure that you don't lose the gasket like i did on the mine oil tensioner so once everything is in place and tied to the newton meter spec we can finally release the oil tensioner pins so the oil tensioner actually have a spring inside so it will tension the chain unleashed so you can time up the engine and tie the mine bolts for the camshafts and once the chain is fully tensioned we can finally put the last timing tools on which i think are the most important one and most special ones so this timing tool is actually holding the plate and the wash at the same time for the camshaft sensor in the correct position and as soon as it's out by plus minus three degrees you will have a faulty readings or these you will actually think that the camshaft is not in the correct position and you might have an incorrect coloration fault so these tools are very important to use i wouldn't even actually try to mark them or put them in the position without the tools because otherwise you might mess up and again you will have to remove the engine and retime it because of a plate so the camshaft bolts are tied down in three stages first it's 40 newton meters then 100 newton meters and then 90 degrees always put the tool on make sure the plate is in place uh, while you're tightening the bolts down just make sure you have something in the old tensioner so it's fully tensioned otherwise if you're going to be tightening the bolts down and uh, there's nothing there the tension might actually flex in and that means your engine when it's going to be running and the oil pressure will be there will be out of timing so just make sure the oil tension is not pushed in while you're tightening the bolts down Once we are finished and we tied everything correctly to the Newton meter spec, we can remove all the timing tools. So the crank pin from the bottom of the sump and the two plates from the camshafts and the most satisfying moment, we will turn the engine a few times. Once you're gonna do like three or four turns, it's good to actually check your timing position again. If the tools are not coming on, you definitely done a mistake somewhere and I'll probably retime the engine just in case. So when you're gonna do the turn, it's in the correct position. So if you thought we are already done here, well we are not, we still have to replace all the gaskets for the timing chain covers, so these are quite important for the cylinder head ones, that's for the EGR and the water port as well, so if you ain't gonna replace them you may have a coolant leak into your oil system. Also there are these o-ring rubber seals for the solenoid and you can tell the rubber is quite old and it's cracking all over the place so you might have excessive oil leak afterwards or even it might suck false air through there so you might have a problem with the vacuum in your engine just for comparison you can tell the new rubbers is nice and soft so i'm not storing the gasket back onto the timing chain cover because it's much easier to fit it on the engine without them uh, next up this is the mine chain cover we have to remove the old crankshaft seal we will start applying the silicon onto the surface so once the cover is cleaned up and dry up we can apply the silicon we use it's dirco so it's up to 600 degrees which is enough we are using the silicon for a couple of years never had an issue just make sure the groove on the covers are fully cleaned up and there's no leftover silicon because that's actually where the silicon will sit and that will make the surface stick together and it, it will seal it properly when we are applying the silicon you don't have to put tons and tons of silicon you can just put one nice constant line into the groove where the silicon should actually sit we are also applying the silicon onto the surface where will be the bolts for the gearbox and the bolts to actually tie the cover down Next up we have to apply the silicon onto the timing chain covers for the cylinder head as well. Again make sure the covers are nice and clean, the grease from all the oil and the groove is cleaned up. Just make sure you probably put a tiny bit more silicon onto the corner so it will seal up properly the whole surface between the cover and the block. So before installing the mine timing chain cover just make sure there's no oil sitting on the bottom of the engine block because soon as you will turn the engine anyway uh, the oil might come out into the fresh silicon and you will have oil leaks straight away after you're gonna start up the car first time. 
Once the mine timing chain cover is in place, you can put the bolts in. I'm using the same bolts again. The only thing is I'll put them in the brake cleaner before I install them and clean them fully from all the old silicon and oil. As soon as you will just put oily, greasy bolts inside there, it might contaminate the silicon and you might have oil leaks very shortly afterwards. So again, there's a Newton meter spec for the bolts. Uh, the Torx 30s are 50 Newton meters and the Allen key bolts are 25 Newton meters. And as a last thing, I'm installing the crankshaft seal. I still have to sort out the rocker cover gaskets. So for some reason, the B7 rockers are much better quality than from the B6 model. And again, the inner coating is not peeling as well into the engine, which is much better quality. So they definitely did improve in the B7 model. So in the Rocco cover gasket kit there are 10 gaskets all together. The big surround gasket, 4 gaskets for the coil packs, 1 small o-ring gasket for the middle bolt and 4 half moons. You can tell the old gasket just wasn't good. You can see all the cracks in the rubber over the years. So that's why the engine have excessive leaks from the left and right. It's very important to have fresh gaskets on otherwise you're just gonna end up with an oil leak. On the engine what you just installed just a quick comparison between the old and new again the rubber is hard and the new one is much softer so it will stick better to the rocker cover so the half moons are installed onto the cylinder head now and i'm just putting a tiny bit of a silicon between the cylinder head and the half moon so it will stick nicely when you're going to put the rocker cover back on Okay, so we are almost finished here guys and obviously there are still a few more gaskets from the kit for the base job that needs to be put it on but unfortunately this particular engine needs a bit of a more doing so I won't be able to film it but there's a full video of this particular car and a bit of advice what to actually look at when you're buying an S4 so check the other videos in our YouTube channel but yeah, these gaskets are actually from the back of the engine for the coolant and secondary air pump as well so we have these metal gaskets which are going here that's for the secondary air pump we have uh, two o-ring gaskets which are for the water ports yeah quite important as well and there are two more which are coming from the top so these are for the oil filter housing including the kit there's a new oil filter as well everything was tied to the newton meter spec as you've seen and in the procedure as it should be so if you're planning to do the job on your own you know how to do it now sort of and you actually know what you need so if you're looking for a similar kit what we use uh, from a genuine parts uh, you can actually check the link in the description under the video and you can actually purchase the kit from us if you're interested this was a bit of a short video uh, for one of our uh, youtube viewer which uh, he wants to do the job on his own so he requested a bit of a more detailed video how to actually install the chains so he don't mess up this is how we do it so Thank you for watching again and I'm really hoping we will see you in the next video. Take care.